Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and today we're going to be going over beginner tips for new players in Back for Blood. These will apply if you've played a lot of Left 4 Dead, but in general, we want to make sure that you guys get something useful out of this. Even if you're an experienced player, I think you will find some of these useful, so let us know down below if we missed out on anything important that you think other players should know when they're starting out in Back for Blood. Either way, let's go ahead and jump into it. First up is that you're going to most likely want to be playing on easy mode, of course unless you're a very experienced Left 4 Dead 2 or Left 4 Dead 1 player, and you have a pre-made. This is mostly intended for new players that are coming into the game, of course if you have been playing this for a while this won't apply to you, but at the very least for your very first run through I just would recommend that you go ahead and learn all the maps and get a feeling for how the game works on the easy mode before you guys go ahead and try to push the harder difficulties. This is also known as Recruit just in case you didn't know that. Second up is to use the knife and heal combo. These cards are something you get very quickly and can be extremely useful. How this works is every time you get a melee kill, you will heal for 2 HP with the healing card, and the knife allows you to one-shot all of the basic zombies that are infected. So all you have to do is just walk up and knife a zombie here or there, and you'll heal a lot of your HP back. This will also help you when you're in emergency situations and you're getting surrounded, maybe you're reloading, and you just need to quickly get rid of some zombies. Since we're already speaking about melee in this game, we probably should mention that you can melee without interrupting your reload. What we mean by this is let's say you have an LMG, a sniper, any other weapon in the game, and you're in the process of reloading it, but all of a sudden you've got a swarm or even just a singular zombie on top of you. Well, you can go ahead and punch them with your melee attack or knife, of course, if you happen to have that card, and it will still not interrupt your reload animation. That is an intended mechanic by the developers in order to help you out. Out. So you do take advantage of this as it has saved my life a numerous amount of times. Number four is that your melee will also take up your stamina. Usually this is about one of the little bars you see at the bottom. So you need to be cautious when you're doing a lot of the running parts as you can quickly find yourself out of stamina if you just start meleeing away too much. This is why I highly recommend that you take at least a couple stamina related cards or stamina regen cards in order to help you out whenever you have to do those parts where you have to run through before the zombies overwhelm you. Number five is the fact that there is alarm doors in this game and you don't want to accidentally activate them. If you do, you will call a horde. What you can do is actually lockpick these doors in order to prevent the horde from coming. This can save you a ton of time and a ton of energy when trying to deal with certain difficulties or certain levels. I know I had one card that ended up causing all doors on the map to basically turn into alarm doors. That was not fun. So what did we do? We decided to all take as many lockpicks as we could in only only open the doors we absolutely had to. Number six is to use the subtitles. If you do have subtitles on, you will see certain things that happen such as boss spawns. There are many other things you'll get notified for that you otherwise just simply wouldn't even know about. For an example, if let's say there was a certain special zombie nearby that gets pinged, it might notify you down below. Or if you happen to be fighting a hag, it will let you know that a hag has spawned in. This can save you once again a ton of time and effort and even just save your entire run simply by knowing, hey, hey, there's a hack coming, everybody get ready, or hey, there's a horde coming, we need to get ready in case you didn't hear the audio cue, because this will usually trigger before the audio cue does. Number seven is that you should be listening to what the game actually has to tell you when it comes to the audio. What we're talking about here is the AI who gives you instructions usually over radio. A lot of times these will give you helpful hints and guides as to where you should be going, what you need to be doing, and all sorts of different things. For an example, when you're doing the mine level, one of the AI will actually say you can't win this fight, just run, or something along those lines. You'll hear a lot of things like this, and it's really important to do your best to listen to them because it will actually save you many, many times from just running in circles or slamming your head against a wall that you simply just can't climb. 
Number eight is the fact that you can damage teammates whenever you're playing on veteran mode or higher, even while they're being grabbed. This is super duper important as I take more team damage when I'm playing with random players than I do anything else. There is a card that can help with this, but for the most part, all you can really do is do your best not shoot your teammates and keep in mind that if they're grabbed by something and you shoot at it, you may be shooting through it and hitting them on the other side. So just keep this in mind next time somebody gets grabbed to not shoot them and do your absolute best to only hit the zombie that has a good grasp on them. Alrighty, I kind of already mentioned this, but our number nine tip is super, super useful as when you finish recruit mode, you're going to want to jump into veteran. Now, once again, there is team damage and there is something you can actually do about this to make things a lot easier. There's a card that makes it so whenever you are crouching, you will not take team damage and you will also not deal team damage. This can save you so much anxiety and stress as when you're shooting somebody that's grabbed or there happens to be a bunch of enemies in front of you, but there's also an ally in front of you. All you have to do is crouch down and suddenly you can't damage your friends anymore. This card becomes even more useful when you go on to the highest difficulty. But in general, this is a card that is very, very important to take early on when you're playing on veteran or higher. Now, whenever you're playing on the final few missions of a certain act, or if you happen to be playing on act four itself, which is a singular mission, we highly recommend you don't take anything related to copper. This is because your copper will not transfer over to the following act. So it's super important that you use the most useful cards you can, and just don't take the ones that aren't gonna be effective for those few missions. Of course, if you've been running through the whole run and you're doing the entire act in one go, you might've taken it earlier and that's perfectly fine. But if you're only doing the last two, three, or four missions and you're starting from that point, we just recommend you go ahead and take it out of your deck because it's not going to be very useful for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found it informative and learned something new. We mostly make reviews and guides for games that are newer and coming out and even some older ones. Make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time.